Exchange traded funds, also known as ETFs. These are one of my favorite ways in the stock market to diversify my money. And with ETFs, you guys, you can take so many advantages here in the stock market by simply owning one single fund. You can diversify across many different assets, many different industries, and get a dividend paid to you by these funds and you can reinvest that dividend and get more capital out of the investment in years to come. These offer so many opportunities and in this video, today's video, the video you are watching, we're going to be talking about two ETFs in particular that I personally love and own in the year of 2019 and I plan on owning these for years to come. So what is an, an exchange traded fund? For those of you guys that may have zero idea, investopedia.com is one of my favorite resources here. And we can see an exchange traded fund is a collection of securities such as stocks that track an underlying index. The best known example is the SPDR, S&P 500 ETF, SPY, also known as SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 index. ETFs can contain many types of investments, including stocks, commodities, bonds, or a mixture of investment types. An exchange-traded fund is a marketable security, meaning it has an associated price that allows it to be easily bought and sold. In other words, it is very, very liquid. So all you need to know is an ETF it's not a bunch of different things that you go buy out in the stock market. It's literally one fund. It's like buying a stock on its own. You literally buy one thing. You can buy multiple shares of this one thing, and it provides you so many uh, assets in different industries, pretty much giving you a ton of diversification by owning one fund. Beautiful thing, right? So let's just hop into two, and you guys could probably see them already if you're looking at the top of my tabs, but if you are, you're cheating because you got to wait till I uh, present it here, guys. Noble, N-O-B-L, that is the number one ETF uh, that I wanted to talk about and that I personally like and I own in my portfolio. And like I said in the definition of exchange-traded funds, these ETFs, they track an index. And you can see Noble, N-O-B-L, the index it tracks is the S&P 500 dividend aristocrats. And this has outperformed the S&P 500 with lower volatility since its inception, which is pretty awesome. And another thing you want to notice here is this is the dividend aristocrats ETF. Aristocrats, meaning these companies have increased their dividends for 25 plus years. So every stock that you're going to see here in the whole Holdings of this ETF, which is super important, you need to analyze and just take a look at the uh, the companies owned. You know these have increased their dividends for 25 plus years. You guys can see it; it's the first bullet, the only ETF that focuses exclusively on companies in the S&P 500 that have grown dividends for at least 25 consecutive years. So just take a look at these companies, guys. They are world class companies. You know a lot of these, right? You know a lot of these companies. You have Kimberly Clark, Chubb, Abbott, Procter & Gamble, Target, Coca-Cola, Colgate, Palmolive, Walmart, you know, Hormel Foods, McDonald's, PepsiCo, McCormick & Company, you know, Sherwin-Williams, Cisco, Clorox, AT&T, Johnson & Johnson, AbbVie, and the list goes on, right? Walgreens, Caterpillar, you have 3M here at the bottom, Exxon, Lowe's, Leggett & Platt. These are companies that have just steadily increased their dividends. So if you are one of those investors that holds very long term and you know that during a recession, which does happen, you know, stock prices go down, but you like having, um, stocks that raise their dividends to provide more cash flow through that downtime, you know, this could be an investment for you, but please do your own research. Do not just listen to me. I am not a financial advisor by any means. I'm just some guy on YouTube giving his opinion. You need to understand these on your own before hopping in and buying it for yourself, right? That's the most important thing. So that's just the list of companies on this one, NOBL distributions. 
let's take a look at some dividends it's, it has paid over the past couple of months, right, and years. You can see on the 20th of, or, or rather the 27th of March, it paid a 24 cent dividend. And over time, guys, the important thing, although the dividends are fluctuating uh, heavily here, the most important thing is that they are increasing over time. And the awesome thing about these funds is, guys, they are managed, right? And, and if one of these companies, let's say they cut their dividend and they're no longer considered a dividend aristocrat, that company will just be replaced by another company or just taken off uh, uh, the ETF, which is a very awesome thing. But with that management, you need to be paying a fee for owning these ETFs. And I'm trying to find it here for you guys. Let's take a look. This one has a pretty decent one at about 0.35%. You'll see the next one we're going to talk about. The expense ratio is ridiculously low. And you guys can see right now the dividend yield is about 2.5% as of the uh, date of 329, which is actually about like three months ago at this point. And I think this has rose, uh, the price of this ETF has rose since that time period. So the ETF, uh, the dividend has gotten a bit smaller. So let's hop over here to this um, Think or Swim platform very quickly. You guys can see you know it's risen a ton since that March date I believe right it was right around here yeah it has risen a little bit so the dividend has shrunk and the thing is guys some of these ETFs right now I probably wouldn't be buying if I didn't already own it right I, I own it right now I'm viewing it as a hold but at this point you know we're at a point in the markets where it could be a tipping point and we might see a big sell-off so in this case you know I'm personally not buying because we're really high up here right now and if we drop, let's say we get back to like the 58, 59 level, maybe like low 60s, uh, or like $60 flat, this is going to open up a better opportunity in my eyes with a better starting yield. Think about it. I don't, I don't know if these numbers are exact. These are off the top of my head, kind of like with my mental uh, calculator here. But I think, you know, if we drop down to $60, that starting dividend would go from like a 2.2 to at least a 3%, I would think, right? And and for dividend aristocrats long term, that could be a pretty good entry point, uh, you know, on this ETF. So Noble, that is one that I really love, I own. And another thing to keep an eye on, guys, uh, just to mention it, is you want to know what sectors uh, is your fund, uh, you know, like what 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 part of the economy is your fund mostly in? Is it in consumer staples, industrials, financials, materials? And you want to see if it's well diversified across multiple different um, sectors. And in my opinion, this one is, you know, it's, we've, we've got 25% in consumer staples. Consumer staples are goods that people are always going to need even through a time period of hard times, which I personally love. I love this one long term. Industrials, that's a bit more um, volatile, right? That's a bit more uh, cyclical, but we have that one at 21%. You see financials, 12%. And this is where we start to get nicely diversified in materials, healthcare, consumer discretionary, all the way down to real estate. So those are things you need to just keep an eye on for these funds. So the second one that I want to talk about today is the iShares Core High Dividend Yield ETF. This one's priced at $94.20 right now. The iShares Core Dividend High di Dividend ETF seeks to track the investment results of an index composed of relatively high dividend paying U.S. equities. So let's take a look down here. Access to 75 dividend paying uh, stocks. So this fund owns 75 um, investments. And the other one, I didn't mention how many it owns. We might as well go back and take a look very quickly because that's important. Seems like this one owns... I'd say about 60 or 70 as well, just looking at this list very quickly. So that's a pretty good fund there. Some own up to like 300, 400 companies, by the way, guys. Uh, so be mindful of that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Let's take a look down here at the holdings. You guys can see this is a higher dividend yield uh, fund, and some of these companies that you're going to see here, they actually pay a pretty higher uh, dividend. So you guys can see XOM, 8.5% weight, JP Morgan, Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, Chevron, Pfizer, 
Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Cisco, PepsiCo. These are the top 10 holdings of this fund. And me personally, I like a lot, pretty much all of these companies. You know, these companies have been here for a long time, and I personally think they're going to be here in the future in their respective industries. If we go to the all tab here, um, we said there were 75. It seems like there's 79 here. Anyway, if we go to the second, you guys can see more big companies, Merck. Texas Instrument, Broadcom, which actually dumped very heavily this past week, Dominion, uh, 3M, Duke, Lockheed Martin, United Parcel Service, uh, you know, U.S. Bancorp, and the list goes on, right? This is very important. Again, like I said, keep an eye on, you know, these facts about the ETF, especially with what kind of stocks are they holding? You know, that's the most important thing, in my opinion, when it comes to this. So let's go and see. P.E. ratio, 18.75. Okay, fees. This is the lower fee that I was talking about. Again, these take uh, management to manage them. 0.08% compared to the 0.35% in the last one. That is ridiculous. This is like four times less uh, in terms of the management fee, the expense ratio than it was uh, compared to the other one, right? So that's very, very good there. And they're also paying an extremely juicy dividend, which I am trying to find for you guys. I know it's very good. So here it is, guys. The ETF yield, I did pass right over it. It is 3.5% right now. Three 3.5%. And that is very, very good in my personal opinion, especially starting out right now. And we're going to look at the technicals in a little bit after we do take a look at what um, this fund has its stocks diversified throughout in terms of sectors. So energy, 20%, consumer staples, 15%, healthcare, 15%, financials, 10%. So this one's very well diversified as well. And when it's coming down, another thing I want to mention here, guys, when you're comparing two ETFs, I think you have to ask yourself, in what sector do you want your money more in, in a way, right? Because you see, this one is more heavily in energy, but the other one is more heavily in consumer staples, right? So you kind of have to ask yourself, you know, do you want more money in consumer staples? You know, this one, the, the aristocrat one might be better for you because let's say you don't want a lot of money in energy, 20% is a decent amount of the fund. That's pretty good. That's like a fifth of the fund. You know, if you don't want your money there, you may be like, okay, this may not be the best spot for me. I want to look for a different ETF that has less weight and energy, maybe more in something more stable like you know, consumer staples, which the Noble one does have. But then you, you can see Noble has a higher expense ratio and a lower dividend. So that also has to come into account when making your decision. So there's just a bunch of different stuff, guys. But I love sharing this with you because this is what I like doing on the weekends. I like doing more research. Although I own these two, I like looking for new ones and just constantly learning and doing stuff like this. It's one of my biggest passions in life, guys. So Let's take a look at the technicals now that we got, you know, the main key facts out of the way about this ETF. HDV, you guys can see that did rhyme. It is very high up on the chart as well, just like Noble. At this point, it's at a resistance at about $95. We have yet to break out of that resistance. You know, markets are near all-time highs. We're nearing the end of the economic cycle. Not saying there's going to be a recession anytime soon. I'm not going to be that guy that tries to call that out. But this, at this point, I would like buying more because, again, I'm, I personally already own. But where, where I would buy more, you know, I would want it down to a at least $85 to be honest with you guys. I would want it to be back down to this 180 SMA. At that point, the dividend yield starting at that point, and my, my guess would be like 4%. If it's like 3.5 now, if we were to drop a bit more, you know, that would pump up the dividend. That would be a very good spot, in my opinion, for HDV. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. The two ETFs were NOBL and HDV. I really hope you enjoyed 
this video and if you guys have any comments let me know down below what do you think about this I would love to know what you own in terms of funds do you like ETFs do you like this more passive style of investing which is just investing in you know ETFs dividend ETFs index uh, you know S&P index ETFs whatever it may be I would love to know and if you guys enjoyed the video feel free to hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy the content Content and you do want to see more from me, I really do appreciate all you guys out there watching, taking your time to watch these videos, hit the like button, subscribe, it means the world to me. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.